Hello, my name is Jay, and today I want to take today to talk about the new anniversary edition i7, the 8086. This will be a CPU that is going to be boosting to 4.1 on a single core and 4.4 on all cores. Now, what I really want to point out, the fact is, is that I'm making this comparison because I've done a lot of stuff with Intel and especially AMD lately in the fact of like these new Ryzen 2 or Ryzen Gen 2 CPUs that will be coming out. And I want to take a moment to look at Intel just to compare, you know, the different colors. You know, personally, I have no bias. I've had an Intel CPU. I've had an AMD CPU. I just go for performance um, for what I'm kind of trying to do. But I want to make this today's video because I feel like, you know, A, I'm going to point out the fact that AMD really does, I feel like is lacking a little bit where they're coming out with, you know, I don't know if it's a whole nother generation or just a different architecture, but it does seem like it, you know, the slight clock boosts are something that, you know, doesn't seem necessary of a whole generation where Intel isn't even jumping the generation, uh, generation stuff by increasing the clock speed. So what 4.4 gigahertz means on all cores is some insane performance. And the best thing is, if we're starting at 5.1 on single core, like we started with the 4.7 last time, that's a 0.4 gigahertz increase off of what we previously had. And so, assuming that also, we could probably see some of the 5.5 gigahertz uh, overclocks, we just simply going off what we saw on the, you know, Coffee Lake 8700K. And of course, this is supposed to be an anniversary edition CPU. That doesn't mean, though, that Intel won't, you know, do something completely crazy. I'd love to see something. But they're also planning on releasing the Z390 uh, chipset as well, um, sometime along with the 8-core processors, which 8-core processors pretty much line up to what the Ryzen were in the sense, but just a, I'm hoping for a higher clock speed. And of course, you know, things tend to be a little different. I mean, that we are moving into a time where we need a little bit more of those CPUs um, for the heavy, you know, intensive graphical, um, you know, rendering, video editing, all those things. They tend to actually need those extra CPUs, and especially with this new Intel stuff coming out, it does finally seem like AMD, yes, pushed Intel out there and you know, pushed them to start actually trying to produce more cores. But we also got to take a look on the fact that you know AMD is, yes, upping the clock speed on some of their chips pretty substantially, and they're also coming out with a new motherboard, etc. But you're only seeing 0.4 gigahertz increase on the, um, not even that, um, the, the 2700X is supposed to come out, AMD's uh, next second gen CPU, only increased in overclocking capability by 0 0.2, 0 0.3 gigahertz on the past gen chipset, which obviously it's past gen, we may have to see. But we also would take into account that, you know, even if we get a new, you know, chipset, even if we do, do, do get some new motherboards, the overclocking will, is, of course, compatible with past generations, which is something Intel kind of has difficulty with. So that point leaves us at this new CPU with the six cores, you know, 12 threads, 5.1 gigahertz boost on one core. I really do think we could see some substantially, you know, bigger overclocking. I'm just comparing the fact that AMD decided to come out with a whole another generation for this. Meanwhile, Intel kind of came out with you know, just some another CPU. Now, I understand there's like memory controllers, all the stuff that AMD is also producing um, that will hopefully increase performance a lot in the multi-threaded uh, performance as well. But just keep in mind that, you know, we do have something that I hope would have fi been fixed before they kind of released Ryzen 1 rather than, you know, waiting out and trying to, you know, produce a clean and polished model. I feel like Ryzen was kind of like a choppy job and now we're finally seeing the, you know, you know, the new Ryzen, like the final polished version, and then we'll get into Zen 2 and all those things there. But the CPU basically really does signify that, the, you know, Intel is kind of going for the strategy, always been the strategy about high clock speeds, because uh, gamers love that. And, you know, if they can do this on an 8-core CPU, something similar to what we see here. I know this is an anniversary edition, as I said, but if we can see something similar from Intel on an 8-core CPU of what they've been doing in the past, it really does kind of, obviously it'll be more expensive, but it really does put into perspective that, you know, Intel is really pushing the speed barrier, and I feel like AMD is just lacking behind. I understand AMD really is trying to compete with more cores, but that still does, you know, still, there's eventually a point where you need to have those high clock speeds because games use them. I know games are moving to multi-thread because they're just so much easier um, to, you know, balance the performance workload and stuff. But I still feel like, you know, gamers will always prioritize that high clock speed and, you know, the people that use workstations and stuff will always prioritize Ryzen, you know, most of the time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'll be including a link to the article that I read and the article that was, did a really good job kind of posting all the information about this. I do think, though, that, my personal opinion is I do feel a little disappointed in AMD in the fact that 
you know, yes, we expected this when it, Ryzen was released. I understand it takes a lot of product and development. I am not sitting here criticizing. I understand the massive amount of time that goes into releasing a product, but I just feel like Intel is able to flip a switch and add some more clock speed. Meanwhile, AMD has to release a whole other generation with a bunch of other features to at least get the speed bump up. Because otherwise, without the, you know, the memory controls, all stuff, the overclocking wouldn't exist. So it's a lot of minor problems that they fixed to get a small increase in performance. And meanwhile, Intel just rolls out another CPU with a whole another, you know, 0.4 gigahertz increase. So really, this does put into perspective that, you know, AMD, I feel like Ryzen was a good idea. But it's just the problem is now that we have a lot of issues. So... I feel like if we were to go through and you know change, I think we'll have to see what both of them do. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give a thumbs up. And of course, thank you for watching. Goodbye.